Hi, and welcome to uh, MS Endpoint Manager YouTube channel. Hi, Kent. Hey, Matthias. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you very much for making time for me and uh, all the viewers. Well, that's that's definitely my pleasure. Uh, it's one of the things I have been wanting to do for a long, long time. So uh, I'm I'm super excited here. And Kent, uh, I known you for very, very many years. You are a Dane like myself. And um, so, how many years is it exactly you've been MVP? So I've been an MVP for I think it's like plus eleven years or something like that i'm i I, sh I should actually know but i'm not quite sure <laughs> it's it's definitely been um it's been it's been quite a ride i mean uh, uh being being part of the community uh is definitely something i cherish for many many good reasons i i get to meet a lot of super interesting people like like yourself uh, matthias and i also get to to talk to a lot of um you know all the community members that are that are using the various services, uh, and I, I know I've said this a thousand times before, but I'm I'm literally overwhelmed with all the uh, activity that we see in these communities, all all the sharing, the caring. Uh, it's like it's it's like expanding your family, hmm. quite a few new friends. <laughs> yeah, that's um, well well said. Well said. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 Kent, you um, you particularly uh, been very much focused on 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 Microsoft Configuration Manager, right? Um, that's been your baby since you started the MVP journey, right? Yeah, that's I've, I've been working. First of all, absolutely, <laughs> I've been working with that product uh, since I think '97. Wow. So it's uh, yeah. It's uh, it's 25 years now, um, yeah. and I I must say that I'm I'm I'm, I'm amazed uh, with the fact that you can you can develop a product. And I know obviously there has been a lot of changes since the very first release, but you can you can develop a product and then it's still relevant after 25 years. That's they did a they did a pretty good job. Yeah. <laughs> they, um, but but yeah, it's um. It's yeah, it's been quite a journey. Uh, it's an amazing product, and um, well, many know that it it became to Microsoft Endpoint Manager. It came from SMS, something like that. That was before I was even no, I was <laughs> born, but I wasn't in the IT business. But um, then it became the Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Now to Ignite, they announced that that's not going to be the name going forward. Now we will use the Intune as the product family and configuration being a part of that. So what do you think about that? So I think, first of all, it's interesting. It's always interesting when marketing is involved in anything. <laughs> but but uh, no, to, to me, it, it makes sense. I would say... Um, I've, I've, I've been in the, in the industry since um, 92. Uh, started out as a developer way back when, um, and I've so I've, I've you know I've seen I've seen a lot of changes and you know new trends and 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 what have you, um, but I've I've never seen a bigger transformation than the one we have you know right now we are in the middle of right now with you know all the cloud transformation uh, uh, every end user working in you know brand new ways. Uh, who would have thought that uh, the office is is half empty every single day? Uh, yeah. It's it's like uh, it's it's like you know COVID never really stopped. Uh, when I look when I when I walk into a customer office, there can be like you know just twenty five people sitting there and seventy five empty empty rooms or, or chairs. So it's I mean it's it's new challenges new it's a new it's definitely a new world order in you know I, I would say and that 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 also comes with with new requirements to the software that we work with with the services that we work with um so to me it makes perfectly good sense uh, you have we have everything branded under the intune name that's that's good that's nice mm. to me it's it's um intune as, as we know it and config manager as we know it it's you know it's 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 pretty much one solution. Uh, you need to figure out 
you know, where does it make most sense for you to use, you know, one versus the other? And I will say there are so many use cases where it makes, to me, where it makes uh, much more sense to, to use Intune, you know, one of them being security, mm. uh, definitely, because it's, it's impossible to keep up. Um, and we, we have all been in a situation where you had a, you know, in, in order for you to enable a new feature, you need to upgrade your entire infrastructure. But hey, you are in the pharma industry, so upgrading your entire infrastructure will take you four and a half months. Mm. And and you know, in between, you you know, you 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 can't mitigate whatever challenge is right in front of you. So yeah, it's a good question and maybe a very long answer, but it it actually makes sense to me. Yeah, change the name. Uh, mm. So Kent, we can't come. Uh, we, we must just mention that you wrote a book on Config Manager, right? It's it's called Mastering System Center 2012 Configuration Manager. And congratulations on on that. I I bought it, by the way. Oh, you did? Ah, uh, yes, I did, and I I read it all, and uh, it was good. And I actually learned uh, a lot of good tricks in that book. But now that we look more and more into cloud services, mm. I I. It's 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 difficult to to deep dive that SQL and and fix that table or upgrade that component that doesn't work or tell the the the, the backend team of Microsoft that we have an issue on on the uh, Internet Information Services on the server or whatever it is. Now it's kind of it's not working. <laughs> Help no. me. <laughs> it's 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 completely different now. It's it's a different world. It's a different game. Um, I I usually have uh, you know two things that I that I that I tell my 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 team and also my customers. And the first one is courage. You need to have courage, um, and you need to be a, you need you need to have an environment that will allow you to fail fast. And what I mean with an environment that will allow you to fail fast is that you you don't have the the luxury like we had a couple of years ago where you know you implemented a system it would stay rock solid for four years maybe there would be a service pack in between maybe a few hot fixes but that was it uh, now we do not even know you know when new services are being released that being in intune in in, in defender in azure um, what we do need is, uh, what we do know is that we, um, when we need to implement implement new services, um, we need we need a method whereby you know we can roll back if something went wrong, and mm -hmm. then you know re-enable whatever we had. And that's what I mean with you know we need to have a system where we can fail fast. So one of the big things that that uh, or one of the biggest challenges that I see it right now is infrastructure as code. So so walking into this, you know, brand new world, you you need to understand, you know, uh, what is what is infrastructure of, uh, as code, what is the, the value and the benefit of that. And the learning curve is um, pretty steep. <laughs> um but it's definitely worth it. It's mm. definitely worth it. Um and when I say when I say courage, what I mean is you can't you can't sit around and wait forever, you know. You 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 need you need to be you know constantly testing. You need to be constantly innovating, um, because if you don't do it this week, then next week you just have twice as many new features that you need to test and implement. It's it's, it's as simple as that. Yeah, um, I agree yeah. completely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a brilliant way of explaining that. So. Um, you mentioned that, uh, yeah. So, while having this IT pro, you mean, you, I mean, this this regular administrator that sits by his config manager and he has been doing this OSG all his life, and that's the task sequence he you know and all that. Now suddenly we come into a cloud world where we have lots of other attack angles, and uh, we need to mitigate those in other ways. And zero trust is one way, but for zero trust to be here, we need some sort of uh, signals that needs to be trusted and thereby using Intune and compliance signals. But um, these antivirus measurements we have today, 
isn't enough anymore. We need other systems to be able to to mitigate that. And that is a detect and response service called, for example, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. That's a brilliant product and it's just getting more and more fit into Intune as well. Uh, the, the latest uh, and greatest that they announced on uh, this new, um, uh, what was it called, after Ignite show um, with a third party patching using MD together with Intune. I mean, that requires the IT admin to be more into security. And we are going to talk about that today. Yeah, and I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like, and I've heard that many times, you know, as an IT pro, you know, when we move into Defender, Intune, Azure, what have you, does that mean, you know, I don't have to do any more work? <laughs> uh, you know, what about all my uh, my task sequence skills? And 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 the truth is, we we need we need all your brain power, and and probably even more, uh, because it's it's not going to, you know, get easier just because we transform into a cloud world and when i say easier some some things will become easier obviously but other things uh, will require uh, you know new ways of, of 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 thinking and and as an it pro i i need to also become a, a security admin probably not you know a security architect, but I definitely need to become a security admin. You said it yourself, zero trust. Zero trust is not a, a check mark that we, you know, enable. It's it's a you know it's a way of thinking. It's it's the, it's a, a set of processes. It's 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 me. It's you. It's everyone uh, behaving in in the right manner, uh, manner. And that that's yeah. It's it's coming, and we have some options in Intune absolutely that we need to know about. Um, mm. Absolutely, and yeah. it's, it's becoming more and more interesting. Uh, I would say, uh, yeah. and there is no way around it any longer. You need to know, um, and and that's that's one of the things you know coming from an IT pro world into security. You might think, oh, you know, there there is a lot of things that I I, I you know I, I I do not want to touch it because I do not know the consequences. What's going to happen if I do that? Uh, and that's why. One of the things that we really want to do in, in you know, in this uh, discussion here is just to, you know, how can we operationalize something? Uh, how can we make something that might be, you know, uh, difficult when you read about it? Uh, because there are, you know, a lot of new terms that you haven't thought about before in, in your old role. But if, if you just break it down, then you can make it super easy to understand. And then you can take something that is very important when we talk about security. And then, then you know, make it super easy to 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 enable, to monitor, to work with, and then you will see an increase in your security on the other side. Uh, that's that that's kind of you know one of the things that we want to talk about here in in, in this call here. Mm. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's see something, Kent, because oh, yeah. uh, I know you have some some fantastic drawing on exactly <laughs> the topic we are going to discuss. So, um, I uh, and believe it or not, but I was I uh, I just I just did this drawing here while I was um, while waiting to get on the call here. Uh, I was like, so I was like thinking, okay, so so one of the things that I call a low hanging fruit when we talk security in tune and defender is definitely the attack service reductions. Attack service reduction rules are super important and and you said it a bit earlier in this conversation here uh, we have our uh, anti antivirus anti malware and they're the, the, the bad guys out there they're just you know often a, a little little too clever so they uh, they 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 will come around those uh, standard solutions and that's where the attack service reduction rules comes in they hopefully they will they will detect you know uh, what our antivirus will normally not detect. Um, so mm. the, the first question, and I, this is this is literally just a story here. So um, I, I have been at a, a, a couple of uh, customers here within the last couple of weeks, and and they all go like, you know, why should we use the attack service reduction rules? You know, what what is it? And it's it's fairly easy because if they don't get it, they have to do it anyway. 
that's, that's <laughs> how it is. And then, you know, then I would normally tell them we will learn along the way, but it, it, it's really that important. You need to do it anyway. So the first thing is we, we should really, you know, gather the team, uh, learn the rules. And when I say when I say learn the rules, if I just scroll down here a little bit, then we have um, we have a couple of rules, and that's that's why you know this is a great way to start. We 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 who have been working as IT pros and with with OSD and what have you, there are a lot of these rules here that we can easily uh, understand. Uh, I've highlighted a couple of the rules. These are the rules that we call the standard rules. So uh, block abuse of exploited uh, vulnerable sign drivers. The three standard rules are rules that we should always enable. Right. Uh, the the other rules in here are rules that we should, uh, you know, figure out if if we really need to enable them in our environment, and 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 it's super interesting um, because how do you figure out if you need it? Uh, well, you can obviously configure the rules to be running in audit mode, but what happens if you don't find anything? Uh, you know, let's say you didn't find any uh, VB scripts uh, being blocked. Uh, does that mean you don't need to enable this rule? Does that does that mean that you were just lucky enough that within the last 30 days, nobody tried to you know exploit the system like this? So I I would say, and then this is just me 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 talking here. You know, once I understand the rules, uh, together with my team, I would I would definitely go in and then say, okay, I can configure my rules in four different ways. I can you know I can configure them in block mode means that, hey, now, now they have an impact. They have an impact on the user experience, definitely. They also have an impact on security. But I can also configure them in audit mode. And audit mode is, is something I wish we had for every every setting, you know, <laughs> in mm -hmm. IT, it would be really, it would be really nice. Now I talked about courage and audit mode is quite the opposite because you don't really enable anything. You don't, you don't prevent anything, but you learn. So you 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 get a lot of uh, you get a lot of knowledge, and what I would typically say is, um, we 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 run audit mode for like thirty days, because I mean, and if you don't do it in in Europe, don't do it in July. I mean, nothing happens in July, right? Don't do it around <laughs> the holiday or something. You you need to be a bit smart here. But what you do after is you you analyze, you figure out, okay, so. So you know how many how many things actually happened? What could we have prevented uh, during this uh, period here? And then based on that, you take action. And obviously, if you have let's say uh, ten thousand devices, um, you will find a lot of um, a lot of uh, items in here when you start looking into your reports or do some advanced uh, hunting. You can mm. easily have you know 240,000 uh, documents, something that 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 we're using an office macro and so on and so forth. So you need to be you need to be smart and you need to you know figure out stuff like okay, so what is the user impact for this specific rule? Was it low? You know, go ahead and block it. What what is, what is the security impact? Was it high? Well, maybe you should block it again. What if the user impact is high? Well, maybe we should exclude something. We can't. We, we have to remember courage. So just because the uh, the the uh, user impact is high, we can't just say okay, then we stop, because then then we will then we will always stop. And that's what I mean with with courage. Let's go in, figure out if we can you know analyze something. Are there certain files that we can exclude? Uh, if we cannot, you know, exclude all the files, and obviously we cannot do that, and we shouldn't do that, then could we at least, you know, enable warning mode? So when we enable warning mode, we'll still, you know, tell the user, hey, you know, right now you're doing something that we 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 don't like. You know, do you want to carry on, or, uh, or do you want to block this? And 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 zero trust is everybody's responsibility including the end users so they also need to you know we need to raise awareness and raise awareness is fine in an email they never read it so it's even better you know when you when 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 you feel it on you know on yourself when you when you when you work uh, you will definitely not forget that mm. uh, and then obviously we 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 also want to at, at one point we want to block in here 
Um, and, and configuring the rules, now you said it yourself, um, if, um, if I, oops, where do I have, that was in my other browser here. So if, if, if I go into, if I go into Intune, and now, as you said, I am in, in Intune, and in Intune, I, I, I just go into endpoint security, and in endpoint security, I have my attack service reduction. Um, just you know, create a policy. You can also use PowerShell for this. You could create an attack service policy as a group policy. We, we don't really want to do that. And now <laughs> we're talking in tune. Um, so my platform in here will be Windows 10 and later, and my profile will then be the attack service reduction rules. And the first rule you create, fairly easy, because it's already created for you. So if we, if we here just call it a demo, that's always a brilliant name. <laughs> then you will then you will notice in here, you know, here you have all the rules. And this is what I mean by if you if you go in here and you haven't, you know, done any research, then you go like, holy cow, you know, what is all of this? And and then <laughs> don't be afraid. Um, just go in, configure everything to be running in audit mode. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing you want to do. Then once you have, as as I showed you, once you have, you know, kind of investigated, and I can, I can, uh, I can show you that in just a few seconds here. But once you have configured everything in audit mode, no, no exclusions, no nothing. You you really want to, you know, uh, learn as much as possible. Let's say this is all in audit mode. Um, then you go ahead and you deploy this, and you would probably, you know, at at, at, at one point, uh, if not from the beginning, deploy this to all devices because this is this is not a it's not an image that you're deploying. So you don't really have to you know think about uh, ring one, ring two, ring three, and so on and so forth. Here we want to gather as much information and, and as many signals as we possibly can. So so for me, I would I would do all devices here, mm. um, which makes perfectly good sense. Now, now this rule is, you know, will have impact, immediate impact. Uh, I've I've never met met a single user who complained <laughs> because nobody knows that it's running in in in, in audit mode at all. Um, and and one thing you can say is, so once once we have been through the audit mode, um, then 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 what? Well. Then we uh, then we would go in here and we would look at you know our reports. So we have some standard uh, attack service reduction reports. We would um, probably go in and if we want to investigate something uh, further, we can go in and 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 look at the uh, timeline on a device in Defender. And obviously we could also, as you said. Uh, we can we can start doing some some advanced hunting, you know. And when we do the advanced hunting here, it could be for troubleshooting purposes. It could also just be to understand, you know, what's really going on in here if if the reports are not good enough. Mm. But I would say to 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 get to the to the point where you can you know go in and 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 block or configure uh, exclusions and so on. The reports in here. Um, to to my experience are, are super helpful. So if if I go back into and this time, I will go into Security Center right, because I I do not find the reports in uh, in Intune. But if I go into Security Center here, and here you can see I already started the report, but I I just go down to Reports, and then I have a report called Attack Service Reduction Report, and it's the same report. There is like only one. Mm. Um, with a few clicks, you will be able to 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 figure out and to analyze. Okay, so what is the impact? Uh, you know, should we mitigate this uh, right now? Should we configure some exclusions and 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 what have you? Yeah. In filters, notice you have the standard protection. So those are the three rules I talked about. Or you have all the rules. Hmm. Um, what I would typically do is, I would actually when I select my rules here. And this might sound like I have way too much time when I'm at work, uh, which is not always the case, but I would actually check them one by one. 
because what I do now is I analyze. So if I take the first one, you know, block uh, persistence through WMI, um, I would do something as simple as look at the rule, look at the results, and here I do not have any data available. Super easy. Then I go into my Excel spreadsheet, and in my Excel spreadsheet, I have all the rules because I try to convince my, my team, my coworkers, my colleagues to do something about it. So what, I, what I've done in here is I said, well, we analyze the user impact. For this one, there is none. I think we should, you know, just enable uh, block mode as, 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 you know, mitigation. There is nothing to test. Can we make a decision? Yes, we can. Who has this one been assigned to? So in here, in this, I've just assigned it, assigned it to myself. And then I have a resolution date and, and you know, and a status and, and, and what have you. This one here is fairly simple. Uh, obviously, if I move into uh, block credential stealing, uh, then when I do block credential stealing in here, there will definitely be be more results. And then this one here becomes uh, kind of interesting. So what you want to do here is you probably want to you know do some grouping and then say okay I'm I'm going to I'm going to group by let's say just for fun of it the detected file. Uh, and once I have the detected file, then instead of having you know. Uh, a whole bunch of, um, of of detections where you go like, where should I start? Where should I stop? You can actually you know, just look at 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 you know one file at a time. Some uh, at the time, some some you can easily ignore, and then learn. And this is where you analyze. So you will figure out here. Um, so in this example here, it's actually I have actually uh, configured a couple of rules also to block. That's why it's it's it, we have some some purple in here. Uh, but here, figure out you know um, how many how many you know uh, devices in my environment does this uh, rule constitute here? What is the user impact? And obviously, if it's if it's ninety eight percent of all my detections, you know I should probably do a bit more. But but as you as you start to uh, to analyze all of these files, you will find you'll also find you know uh, office macros and what have you. There'll be file names in there, so you can you know go to the team and say, hey, you know, uh, dear colleagues in HR, you're using um, 10, 10 templates that are actually you know causing security issues. Can you please go to your vendor and tell them to change whatever that needs to be changed? It's it's super interesting. Uh, and obviously, there are there are there are a lot lot of things that you need to do when when you analyze, but it's 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 not like it's um, it's not like it's impossible. Um, and you'll you'll quickly realize that you know just just after uh, you know, a little time doesn't have to take more than seriously doesn't have to take more than a couple of hours to to fill in the Excel spreadsheet. And when you fill in the Excel spreadsheet, what you want to do here is, you know, you, you just want to figure out, can we can we do something in here? What is the user impact? And this is not rocket science. If you have 300,000, you know, uh, detections, then the user impact is probably medium or high. When it's medium or high, you, you, you probably want to look at some exclusions, some block mode, maybe some warning mode, and you definitely want to do some testing. This, this is this is not rocket science, uh, and I'm not sure if it will work for everyone. I just know this this really you know kind of works for uh, for the teams that I've been working with. Um, and there is there is a lot of information out there on uh, on a tech service reduction. So that's kind of how you would uh, you know make that make that fly. Uh, mm -hmm. The requirements. Windows 10, Windows 11, um, Defender Plan 1. Uh, you need obviously you need to have Defender. It needs to be in uh, in active mode. But I think you know the requirements are something that what that we all meet. Uh, so I would say low hanging fruit. Um, you know, and definitely an increase in security. Uh, those of you who have been working with exposure score with security score, you will see. I, I almost guarantee you, if you go in and you look at your, you know, on your top twenty list, 
uh, on your exposure score and, and the remediation actions. You'll see a lot of attack service reduction rules in there. Um, so there are really no no excuses. Uh, no. It's 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 really it's really all just about you know courage and do something about it. Uh, and you don't have to enable all of them, right? But you exactly. do have to in, you have to enable some, like right now. <laughs> Uh, yesterday. And, uh, yesterday, yeah. Oh, yesterday was <laughs> Sunday, but but still, yeah, you you get the point. So so that's super interesting. And then um, the you know the number of attack service reduction rules, you know, they 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 I, I'm pretty sure they will increase. And, you know what Microsoft has done in here is um, uh, super helpful, very mm. easy for for you know all of us to understand that you have you know a warning block and uh, and not configured. Uh, so yeah, super useful, Kent. And um, yeah, the takeaways here: if if you have the licenses, then why don't you just uh, get going? Really, you have the Intune console, you have endpoint security. Yep. Kent and just then, showed you how to to make it audit, yep. and it doesn't yep. hurt on your devices. Not at all. The only thing you need to remember is, you know, after the audit. You have to do something. It doesn't stop with the audit, and that's that's what I have seen at a you know when I've been on site at a couple of uh, uh, colleagues here. They they have they have everything in audit mode, and that's it. Maybe mm. configured like half a year ago. We have to do something. We have to analyze. We have to take action. Yeah. So, yeah. That's really really brilliant, and uh, low hanging fruit here, and. Um should definitely go and uh, fix that if you have E3, for example, you have P1 Defender out of box. So uh, go do that. So Kent, this was really nice and I really want to invite you to another session where we maybe deep dive into advanced hunting or something like that, because, you know, the new um, IT admin also needs to know a new language called uh, KQL. And um, yeah, we're going to look at that. Maybe not so much uh, in, in the next session, but uh, at some point we will look at, at some KQL. And uh, yeah, you need to learn that to, to operate these systems. That's just how it is. I look forward to, to come back. <laughs> definitely thank you, Kent, very much. And uh, to all viewers, just want to say thanks for, uh, yeah seeing this video and I hope it was very helpful for you to get started on attack surface reduction rules. See you Kent. Yeah, cheers. You have a good one.